It is dusk at Kandahar Air Base, an armed camp of 50,000 foreign soldiers, contractors and airmen, and the logistical hub of the war in southern Afghanistan. Medivacs, surveillance and transport missions will continue around the clock. Among the fleet of mainly US machines, there is just one Australian Chinook. Australian Chinooks and their support crews have been deployed in pairs to support operations since 2006. The other Chinook on this rotation crashed in 2011, causing the death of Lieutenant Marcus Case, who was riding on the rear ramp. Australia's 26th combat death in Afghanistan. Um, basically what we've seen here is, uh, yeah. from a post-flight, we've had um, the, uh, the maintenance crew go over the aircraft just to make sure it's okay and nothing's broken in flight. Um, it's, it's something we do every day, uh, and it's, it's, it's like, I guess, servicing your car, if you will, um, only a little bit more technical. So, yeah, basically, you've just seen the, like I said, you've seen the guys go over the aircraft, make sure it's within specs and within uh, tolerances and that sort of stuff, and it is good to go flying the next day. Yeah. yeah um, we've still got some little bit, little bit extra work to do. We've got um, some self-protection stuff to fit. Um, once that's done, we'll put it to bed, so to speak, and, and yeah, we'll be done. All right. Thanks. The following morning, we depart for the first job of the day, taking troops to a nearby patrol base. The base is in the Panjwai district, which was the scene of heavy fighting for many years when the Canadians were in control of Kandahar. Glass walls, watchtowers and HESCO barriers protect the base. Improvised explosive devices make vehicles like these strikers the preferred way to travel by road around this area. The pilot Captain Shane Mitchell explains. Like I, said, I mean, we, we had a report several years ago when guys were here, um, you know, when the media were on board and they saw that RPG get fired. Uh, and that was one of the eye-openers that our aircraft were getting shot at. And we, we didn't know, and, and even now, uh, you know, if we do get engaged, a lot of the time we don't know about it. You know, unless the guys happen to be looking in the right spot to see um, someone you know, have an a, attempt at hitting the aircraft. Um, or if they actually hit the aircraft, which is like what happened to Captain McConville last year. Um, over the Argandab Valley, they actually got a few rounds through the aircraft, which they they heard. Um, a couple of guys on board got wounded, uh, and then uh, they subsequently uh, had some issues with one of the engines um, when they came back to CAF. So, you know, unless uh, it's reported to us from someone else who was on the ground and saw it, uh, or we actually get hit with the aircraft, or someone you know got lucky enough to see it, then a lot of the time we don't know about it. Uh, and you know, we just we ignorance is bliss, pretty much, and we just we just crack on and don't know. So, The main Australian base in Tarancot is the next stop. Then a low flight over the barren hills to patrol base Nassar to pick up some Australians.
dust landings for us are quite challenging uh, in the in our Chinooks because we don't have any coupled systems to assist us with a landing in dust. Um, so what we essentially do, and this is what we, we train for and conduct here a lot because there's a lot of fobs that have dust, is we uh, attempt to do an approach that gives us the minimal amount of forward speed and that we can keep the dust um, away from the, the cockpit windscreen for as long as possible. So that's why we do what is essentially a sort of descending flaring um, approach to try and get the aft wheels on the ground before we brown out and the dust engulfs us and then once we uh, let the wheels on the ground whatever forward speed we've got uh, is pretty much what we get and that's why we stand on the brakes and try and pull it up as quick as we can. So uh, they are quite challenging, it's probably one of the most challenging things we do here is getting those approaches right because if we don't uh, it can be very dangerous because we don't have visibility at the front windscreen to see what's going on. So. The escort chopper overhead reports an unknown vehicle approaching. With the soldiers safely back behind the wire of their patrol base, we depart. This terrain is typical of Rosegon, a green river valley where the village is, surrounded by bare dry hills, or as the Afghans call it, the dashed. We drop the soldiers at their main patrol base in another valley in Rosegon. This is the last Australian base on the way back to Kandahar, marking the end of the Australian controlled area. The limit to the aircraft's altitude it can maintain is actually us, um, because it's a, an issue with the crew and hypoxia and that kind of thing. Um, normally we're limited to 10,000 feet, but over here we're allowed to go up to 12,000 feet as long as it's for not more than uh, it's an hour. Um, but the airframe itself, if, if we had oxygen, the airframes can climb up to 20 odd thousand feet. Um, the issue being up here is that, again, because we're generally heavy, sometimes we have to climb over mountains that are quite high, like at 10 or 11,000 feet, um, and, you know, we, we might be quite power limited, um, or it's putting a lot of strain on the airframe because of the weight we are trying to climb at height like that. So, but no, we're actually limiting factor. Uh, normally, uh, 
Uh, they just do a, a test fire uh, to ensure the weapon system is working correctly and then um, basically um, maintain observation outside the aircraft while it's in flight so, and uh, only react to things when they see them. So, um, but some missions, uh, they need to, uh, when they're approaching a, a pad and stuff like that, they may have to go in there with all guns blazing, so it depends on the tasking. So, so. Uh, each gun holds uh, 4,000 rounds, uh, so a total of 8,000 rounds for the aircraft. And the ramp gun is a 58, it holds it round. We hold about 1,200 rounds for that. This mountain overlooks Kandahar City, and beyond that, the Kandahar Air Base. The rockets that frequently land on the Kandahar Air Base are fired from here. This sprawling city of half a million people is one of the most dangerous in the world for Westerners. Kidnappings, assassinations and suicide bombings are common. Even though we're only 10 kilometres from the Kandahar Air Base, the road is deemed too dangerous to travel for these US passengers. The problem with an environment like that is it's obviously very built up urban terrain um, and at the speeds we operate uh, we want to be fast so that people don't get the opportunity to engage us or track us with any weapon system um, but also there's a lot of towers and a lot of wires and a lot of the time there's kites that fly around there whether or not it's because people put them up because of us or you know it's just a recreational thing but generally around Kandahar uh, unlike today there's a lot of kites that sit above the level that we will fly over uh, so we generally end up dodging kites and towers and whatever else uh, at the time so um, yeah the issue's being that there's just a lot of obstacles there and we want to stay low and fast so that we, we uh, there's less chance of us getting, getting engaged or getting seen. Within minutes, we are crossing the outer perimeter of the base and negotiating to land on one of the busiest airstrips in the world. As far as um, being in Australian Army Aviation, this is probably one of the uh, the pinnacles of our career um, to be able to come somewhere like here and operate in the environment that we do. And it's not just necessarily from a tactical perspective, 
Uh, the fact that we come here and operate an aircraft on the edge of its limits as far as its all up weight, um, you know, conducting approaches into small dusty pads, uh, you know, as well as the tactical situation put on top of that. Um, you know, there's not too many places we can go and develop our flying skills and be challenged as much as we are here. Uh, so it's a very good place to come to, to do our job for real. Uh, and what we try to do here is, is provide that capability to the guys on the ground who really need it. Um,